Hey, hey guys. guys. So we made it to Colorado and we are headed for Mesa Verde National Park, somewhere I've wanted to go forever. This is like a dream of mine. So um, when I started figuring out that we were coming here, I started researching it online, doing a bunch of YouTube videos, and I just didn't feel like I was very prepared coming here because there wasn't a lot of information or good tips to make it seem like we were ready. So we have a couple tips to share with you. And the first one is you want to get there pretty early in the morning to sign up for your guided tours. There are three tours you can take that are ranger led tours in the park, but they sell out pretty quickly. Now we came not necessarily peak season, so we didn't actually have any problems getting tickets. We still got there early in the morning, um, but you can buy your tickets up to a day in advance. So for us, we knew we were going to stay today and then tomorrow. Um, and we kind of, after talking to the Rangers, figure out how we were going to divide that up. So we were able to buy all those tickets at once. So you're going to want to split it into two days if you can, possibly. That's, that's a big tip for us. And the reason being, this park is split into two directions. So you have like half of the main features on one side of the park, like an hour and a half this way. And then you have the other half of the features like an hour and a half this way. So they're not close to each other. And they're actually called Mesa. So you have the Chapin Mesa which has Balcony House and Cliff Palace, mm -hmm. which you can do in the same day and then see all the surrounding things and make one day of it and it will be an awesome day. I can promise you that. Okay, and so then tomorrow our plan is, is that we're gonna do the opposite Mesa and we're going to do, is it called Longhouse? The Longhouse Tour the and that's on the Weatherill Mesa. And that one's twice as long. That one's like two hours long, supposedly. So you definitely could squeeze it into one day but it would be a lot of like meticulous like get in the car we got to drive an hour and a half this way now we have two hours to be here and then yeah. etc and it would be stressful i think i don't think you'd be able to enjoy some of the things like cliff palace is so amazing and the balcony house so let's get back to day one let's say cliff palace and balcony house we started with balcony house mm -hmm. and we did the 11 o'clock tour and you want to make sure from the visitor center to like Balcony House and Cliff Palace is about an hour. But if you look at the overlooks and check out some of the stuff along the way, it's a little bit longer. So make sure you set it far enough out that you give yourself some time to do the overlooks and things like that. Um, but we started with that at 11 and then we did Cliff Palace at 1.30 and it worked out perfect to where we could have the best little picnic for a half hour right yeah. by Cl uh, Cliff Palace. So Balcony House, the kids absolutely loved, loved it. That it. was their favorite thing they did today. And I think it's in part because there's like jungle gym type stuff you do. So it starts out with a 32 foot ladder that is pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie yeah, on the cliff Yeah, it takes side. you straight up the cliff face. So that gets you up into the cliff dwelling there. And then as soon as you come in, you, you can see why they named it the balcony house. There's actually a balcony and what they call like a dance room. And it is really, really cool. Uh, another reason why the kids loved it was, you know, you're crawling through um, these tight spaces and then to exit the balcony house, you literally have, have to, to crawl climb through, through this, <laughs> this little tunnel. So if you're claustrophobic, eh, it might be a little, or really a little sketchy. Or really any kind of mobility issues, right? Like. If you have a hard time walking or you just had knee surgery or ankle surgery, Mesa Verde is especially not the guided tours, right? Like the other yeah. things we've done that were just kind of off the road, I think you could do. Um, but these guided tours are pretty rigorous in the ways that like, I mean, you were literally crawling on your hands and knees to get right. through there, squeezing through things. So if you can't climb a ladder unassisted, then um, you wouldn't want to spend the money to take that tour for sure. Yeah, so Balcony House was a blast for all of us, but kids, if you have younger kids. They loved it. Gotta take them there, they will have a blast. Now, me, I loved Cliff Palace, and it was just yes. because, if you think of like Yellowstone, you've ever been there, you've got like Old Faithful, and you've got like this grandiose thing, that is Cliff Palace for Mesa Verde, and you walk around the corner and see this thing, and you're just like, Holy it's almost cow. unbelievable. It's, yeah. it's like, I think 125 rooms. There's just, it takes up the whole canyon. It, it's so neat. And if you're a history buff and you can think of how these people lived, it is awesome. So Cliff Palace for the adults, I think you'll really enjoy the history and just the sheer size and amount of work it went 
into making this thing. It's amazing. And I'd say it's a little less rigorous, right? Like if you Absolutely. have a hard time walking and things like that, um, they do have railings and things like that to help you get to the top. There's no tunnel crawling right. um, for C Cliff Palace. So I do think that one is kind of like, I guess the easier option. However, I would say if you were trying to squeeze this all into one day, like you only can spend one day at Mesa Verde, Balcony House is beautiful and very cool and very adventurous, but honestly, I think that you just have to see Cliff Palace. It's a must see. Yeah, like so. if you had to just choose one thing from this loop and one thing from that loop, definitely Cliff Palace needs to be at the very top of your to-do list. Agreed. So. And they said in the peak season, sometimes you they will not allow you to get passes to Balcony house and cliff palace on the same day because there's just so many people who are trying to get in and do a guided tour so again you have to make a decision that's our recommendation for sure cliff palace cliff palace yep definitely now if you choose that loop for the first day you can do your tours and then now you have what's called the upper loop and uh, there's a lot of overviews you get an actual overview of cliff palace which is the best place to get like a full spectrum picture of Cliff Palace. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of shows how they began with their houses and their pueblos on top. And it kind of paints the story of what led them to move down into the cliff dwellings and stuff. So it's like a six mile loop or so, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. But there's stop after stop after stop of just history and cool overlooks and stuff. And so that can kind of finish out your first day. And, uh, and it's really easy because it's literally like you drive along the whole loop. It's only one way. You stop every few minutes. It's all paved. Um, and if you have mobility issues and you can't do the tours, it is still amazing yeah. just overlooking these canyons and seeing these huge cliff dwellings. So something to keep in mind. It, you can still go to Mesa Verde and see some pretty amazing things even if you don't do the tours. Mm -hmm. But if you're capable of it, don't miss it. It's sure. so fun. And just so you know, there is a fee that's related to those tickets. Not only do you have to show up at the ranger station to buy them in person, but it is $5 per person per tour. Yeah. So just if you're planning out budget wise, um, that's definitely something to factor in because we took our whole family. We've scheduled three tours. That's, that's a good chunk of money. So as you're planning your trip, just make sure you're budgeting for that because it's worth it. Like I think seeing the overlook is beautiful, especially with Cliff Palace, but you would be remiss if you didn't get to see it up close and personal yeah so that's kind of a recap of day one um, we're gonna go do day two tomorrow yeah and we'll kind of do a recap of it if we find any more tips or anything but uh for sure split the park up if you can yeah. make sure you two hit everything you can it's where it, well worth it so. make sure you pack a lunch yeah and eat it at that have Cliff a great Palace. picnic <laughs> it's it was perfect it was such a good day all right, All right, guys, we'll keep you updated, and uh, hopefully this is helpful to get you planning your trips. See you tomorrow. All right, so we just finished day two at Mesa Verde Park, and again, I can't stress how important it is to get two days if you can, because um, it was almost another full day. Um, we did the Weatherill Mesa section this time um, versus the Chapin Mesa that we did yesterday, um, and we survived the road that gets to uh, the end of Weatherill Mesa. I mean, this thing- It's so steep. It's crazy. Sometimes we were going up this hill and I was like, I don't know if our minivan's <laughs> gonna make it. It sounded like it was gonna blow up in some of the downhills. Like I've been to Yellowstone Park and stuff, but this road, just be prepared, is pretty gnarly. So, um, but beautiful views from the road. And very different um, landscaping from what you see on the other loop. There was much more wildflowers mm -hmm. and it was just, um, I don't know, it felt like a completely different park. Yeah. And they're not very far away geographically, but just driving along they do. They have a totally different feel, so that was kind of fun to do today. One thing that I liked about the Weatherill Mesa is it was <clears throat> more low key. It seemed like the Chapin Mesa was just busy, people everywhere, just hustle bustle. And the Weatherill was just relaxing and kind of slow down. So we um, ended up showing up. Um, there's a self-guided tour at the Step House, which is really fun. A um, little bit of a hike. It's kind of strenuous. Um, it's about a mile round trip, I think. That's what they had said, yeah. Somewhere in there. And it's a loop, so you can go in one way and come out another way. Yeah, but you get down there and you can kind of cruise through it yourself and um, kind of get an up-close and personal look at it uh, at your own pace. Um, it is 
limited in hours though, so you kind of got to um, prepare to either get there before or after you do the guided tour, um, which is going to be the longhouse tour. Another good thing though about Step House is it's one of the only ones that you don't have to pay for and you get really right up close to it. Like in parts of it you're actually walking up along the steps. So if you came at like peak season or something like that and weren't able to get guided tours, that's one that you could really get nice and close. Yeah. And they had, um, what's it called? Not a petroglyph, right? Because it's the paint. Yeah, so the... A hieroglyph. Yeah, they had painted, the no. indigenous people had painted their hand on the, on the yeah, wall. So it was kind of cool to see. So something different than we hadn't seen on the other side of the park too. So that was cool. But definitely fun. And you can buy like a book. I think it was like 50 cents or a dollar. And there's little numbers throughout the... Um, uh, actual cliff dwelling and as you get to them you can kind of read and um, get the history about them so and like I said it's your own pace um, but the longhouse tour the best awesome. tour. I would say if you can only do one this is the one to do it's not as visually like appealing and as like awe-inspiring as Cliff Palace so like if I if you can just like look at one that cliff one's Palace, great yep. but for tour -wise. Something about Longhouse because you're actually like getting inside of the different, um, they're not Pueblos, what are they? The structures within the cl yeah. cliff dwelling. But the cool part I liked about the Longhouse was when we went in there, we didn't know much about it. And I thought the tour was two hours long because you had a longer hike. It is a two and a half mile round trip, but that really isn't why the tour is longer. You get down into the Longhouse, which believe it or not, they were saying the Longhouse was just as big as um, Cliff Palace at its heyday. And looking at the way it was built, it looked like there was six story tall buildings. I, I have to say this might've been the place to be because the spring that's there that fed the water to these indigenous people was still flowing and still awesome. But with Longhouse, it's still huge, it's still awesome. Again, it's not as well preserved as like Cliff Palace is, but but you can get much closer to it, right? So like you can see the seep spring and the park ranger like squoze the moss. You can see how much water is really flowing through there. You can see a lot of um, things that are left behind. They have like um, fossilized places where like the corn husks were. Mm -hmm. um, there was very primitive like ways in which they kind of like pulled up that water. Yeah. I don't know, it was just really, really cool. And for me, I think that one, I felt more connected to it like yep. people really live there versus like cliff palace where it's like oh yeah this is like a really cool and beautiful thing but because of all the little i guess nuances that you kind of get up into in longhouse um yeah and i think you that's just the, feel it yeah. i guess i think that's the difference between shape and mesa and weather mesa is you have a lot less people and so they can take more time to explain the history to you and allow you to see more of the actual cliff dwelling so like at cliff palace they would tell you about like there's layers behind layers behind layers and you couldn't see the layers behind it and you just wanted to go back there so bad and see it well in the longhouse tour you you get to go back there you get to go behind these actual structures and stuff and and the the guide that it seemed like they were more passionate about it because they got to spend more time down there and they get to really have a story time with you but something that we stumbled upon accidentally was the time frame that we selected for Longhouse. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize it, but there's there's a void kind of with longer stretches between tours. Well, they have like a, a early morning one and then they take a break for like lunch and things like that, the Rangers do. So then we came back for the first one in the afternoon. And for yep. us, it happened to be at two o'clock. Yep. But because we were the first ones, um, as we went through, there was nobody else around. And as we were getting ready, I would say like three fourths of the way through the tour, we could see the other people starting to come down. So we got a ton of amazing videos and photographs of us with all of the different um, like structures yeah. with nobody in the background. Yeah. Whereas these people, because they happen to just be the next round and I'm sure that's how they schedule it for the rest of the day. If you don't get that first one either in the morning or the first one after the break, you're gonna get a lot of pictures with a lot of people in them. Yeah. So that, we just got lucky. We didn't even plan it that way, no. but um, it's a good we were tip so <laughs> grateful, yeah, that it all had worked out that way. Because just having that moment, I guess, where it's it like special. peaceful and it's quiet. Like the more people start coming in, like you can hear them talking while we're trying to live, you know, and it kind of takes away a little bit of the ambiance of it. So yeah, that's our tip. Either go very first one in the morning, or if they have a gap, try and get that first one after the gap. But overall, 
Mesa Verde National Park. It's a must see. It is so yeah. much fun. I, I'm ready to go back and do it all again. That's how cool it is. But um, it's, it's an experience that I hope everybody gets to see because it's amazing. The history is there. The cliff dwellings are uh, special. And we had a blast. The kids had a blast. And I don't know. And if, if you've ever been and we missed a tip or something that you think is important to share, we'd love to hear that too because um, there's not a lot of information out there. Yeah, so we're going to kind of put this video together with all the tips and stuff, but please comment below if there's something that you've done or if you're a multi-timer, <laughs> you've gone yeah. to Mesa Verde multiple times, you learn a lot just from even our first visit. Because it seems like time of the year could be very important. We didn't go at peak season, so we didn't have to deal with a lot of the crowds. We were really able to get early access. Like we were able to get all the tickets that we yeah. wanted. Um, but it was also like a crazy year where they had a lot of rain and stuff. So everything was green and beautiful. So I guess if you just yeah. have any tips that are things that we missed, um, let us know. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. following us on our travels. All right. Bye. Bye.